a game theoretic approach. And uh, this paper has been published uh, at the IEEE International Conference on Cloud Computing, for short, IEEE Cloud. And uh, this is basically the first paper that uh, used mathematical modeling to understand side channel attack in cloud computing. So to say a little bit uh, on the history of the paper, so when Dr. Min Zhao came to our lab last year as an expert in cloud computing, so I tried to see what are the potential conflicts we can have that relate to cloud computing. Because for us doing interdependency research, we know the game theory part, but that's just a tool. And uh, we need the application. So having the tool, we can have many applications. So when I meet a researcher from uh, a different background as uh, I have, so I quickly ask myself, what type of application of uh, game theory we can have there? And uh, with Dr. Minza, we discuss uh, uh, over eight weeks, it was eight or twelve, uh, uh, eight weeks, yes, we discussed over eight weeks and uh, came up with uh, this model and uh, this formulation that have been well accepted in the research community. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, other collaborator like uh, Dr. Kevin Kiat. So that's my mentor in the laboratory. So he selected me right out of PhD to become his postdoc and uh, gave my government position. We have Dr. June Park from uh, Syracuse University. So he came to our lab for a sabbatical that lasted two years under the National Research Council. And uh, Manuel Rodriguez is our postdoc. Yes, working in the lab with us in his uh, first year postdoc. So we do not work by ourselves. So everyone knows that uh, research is not a single person game. Research needs some level of collaboration. And uh, our laboratory have a different program to push that collaboration with uh, industry and academia. I will be starting by the generality before to go into the specific. And uh, in general, I will give like a short overview of uh, what is uh, my research area is about. And then we're gonna be talking about public cloud computing. And by the way, anytime I'm gonna mention cloud computing here, we are not talking about the private cloud. It will be only about public cloud computing. So uh, we're gonna see what are the challenge, talk about uh, the cross side channel attack, those are the cause of interdependency, talk about game theory, our system model, game model, do the analysis, and at the end, conclusion and a reference. A reference for the paper, basically. So, what is uh, our research area? Research area, as I mentioned, you have uh, many research topics. They can go from uh, cyber survivability, those research topics, and we have the mathematical tool. So particularly those are the different topics I apply directly game theory into, and those are the tools that I use, the mathematical approach that I use for that. So in the general sense, broad sense, all of this relate more or less to game theory. So as I say, we have the tool, those are the tool, and we need the application. So for instance, during my PhD dissertation, I was applying game theory in the area of uh, wireless communication, sensor network and uh, ad hoc network. So this is part of my PhD dissertation. And uh, going to the lab, my postdoc was uh, game theory applied to cyber survivability. And uh, also diversity was part of that. And uh, now we are looking into cloud computing. That will be basically this talk. We have also problem related to hardware torture. So malicious hardware, and uh, how can we better test those malicious hardware? So we have also publication in this direction, uh, cyber threat monitoring, online social network, cyber threat information sharing, the list go on. And uh, we have uh, game theory, that's the general framework, 
And uh, when we are talking about mechanism design here, it's when we do not have the whole of the game. So if you are in a game when the whole are not set, so how to set the optimum possible whole will be the area of uh, mechanism design. Evolutionary game theory will be to look into irrational behavior, so it's prospect theory. We have also matching theory, that's Nobel Prize winning theory. Even in prospect is also Nobel Prize winning theory. Contract theory, Bayesian game repeated. So I'm not going into the specific here, but more or less, any problem map into a game theoretic approach. And after having our game theoretic approach, that's where we go into the GTL to do a GTL analysis. And a GTL analysis will be like to find the Nash equilibrium. Many of you know Nash from uh, the movie. For those who are not familiar with game theory, uh, The Beautiful Mind. Who in this room saw this movie? Yes, so many people. So that's the most popular movie when you mention game theory to people. So uh, Nash won the Nobel Prize in 94 for bringing out that equilibrium, basically to say that we cannot get lost. Anytime you model a problem, you have the solution. So the difficulty is not to get the solution, but is to model the problem. So by Nash theorem, anything we model, we are guaranteed to have a solution to the problem we are modeling. So that's what's contribution of Nash in the area. So let's bring game theory to the cloud. <laughs> and we need to have like a general understanding of uh, cloud computing. What is cloud computing and what is not cloud computing? Sometimes the definition is not that clear. But uh, the commonly accepted definition in the research community, I hope Ming will agree with me, is uh, from the National Institute of uh, Science and Standards. So uh, to be cloud computing, you need those five elements. And uh, on-demand self-service, uh, broad network access, resource polling, rapid elasticity, measure service, and uh, Going to the cloud, you have multiple benefits. And uh, those benefits are fastest deployment, infrastructure, flexibility, and very importantly, no upfront investment. So if you have, uh, you want to do, go to the cloud, you don't need to invest in your own infrastructure. You basically lease the computing infrastructure. So you use it for one hour, you pay for the one hour. For one month, you pay for the one month, so easy. So that makes cloud computing very attractive. And uh, we have uh, additional benefit like fine grand billing, pay as you go, improve productivity. But those benefits do not come for free. So you have also some drawback of uh, cloud computing. And uh, what are the potential drawbacks for a company who decide to go to the cloud? So you can have uh, uh, availability of service and data is a problem if you do not have a good internet connectivity, reliability, complexity, performance. But we are not focusing here. We are focusing on uh, privacy, security, interdependency, and uh, negative externality. So many may ask, why negative externality? People are familiar with uh, negative externality in the context of pollution or economic so when you have a big industry who have uh, many pollutants, you are having infected air around you without having the benefit from that company. So that's a negative externality for you. In the context of uh, cloud computing, you have uh, multiple users sharing the same resources, and you do not know who your neighbor are. And uh, what will be the neighbor in cloud computing? There will be those who share the same hypervisor and hardware with you. So you have no way to know. You have some way, but initially going to the cloud, difficult to know who your neighbor are. And they can be more or less secure. And uh, more or less secure, mostly depending on what they expect to lose in terms of uh, a cyber attack. So you can have there 
let's say a student from FIU going to a public cloud, it can be assumed safely that he has less to lose compared to an Air Force virtual machine on a public cloud. So having different potential loss create also some difference of concern about security. The more you have to lose, the more concern you will be about your security in a public cloud. So you have in the cloud, we will separate two type of player in general and depending only on what they can lose. We will have the small player who have almost nothing to lose and you have the big player who have everything to lose in case of uh, a security breach. So how that imbalance affects an organization choice to go to the public cloud or not is still to be studied. So we are trying to bring up some answer in this presentation. So how that imbalance affects public cloud, public cloud in terms of security investment and uh, many other So what, cause, what are the causes of cyber security and their dependency in a public cloud? So we have a no perfect isolation of user. So that's a well-known problem. They are sharing common resources. And uh, some of the resource can be partitioned, like CPU cycle, memory capacity, and uh, input output bandwidth. And uh, some cannot be well partitioned, like the list level cache, the memory bandwidth, the input output buffer and the hypervisor. So those shared resources can be exploited to launch cross side channel attack. So they can be exploited. And that's where game theory come into play. So anytime you are in a scenario where the outcome do not depend only on what you are doing, you have a game theoretic problem. So since in the cloud they are sharing their resources, and their security are interdependent to each other, so a virtual machine is more or less secure, depending on what <clears throat> level of security other virtual machines in the same hypervisor have. The more secure the other virtual machines are, the more secure you are also. And the less secure they are, the less secure you will be. Because what? An attacker can just do what? Find the weak link. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I, maybe, can you just clarify? I think I know what a side channel attack is, but what's a cross side channel attack? Uh, the same thing. Same thing. Just cross to say that going across different virtual machine. Yes. So that means compromise a virtual machine, going to the hypervisor, and then uh, launch an attack on other virtual machine. The assumption here is that basically if the hypervisor is compromised, every virtual machine on that hypervisor, you see, can be compromised easily. Yeah. And research support that and, uh, mm -hmm. okay. yes. Also, feel free to ask any question as I'm going. You know, you don't have to wait for the end to ask any question you have. Mm -hmm. I welcome the question at any time. So to support cross side channel attack, I'm picking only two purpose. Those are the two most cited purpose when we talk about side channel attack. So this first research was done at MIT, actually. This is uh, an MIT purpose. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so and uh, this purpose showed that uh, a malicious user can analyze the cache to detect coincident VM keystroke activity and map the internal cloud infrastructure and launch side channel attack on a coincident VM. Coincident VM basically means you are in the same hypervisor. So that can be done. That is supported and commonly accepted. And uh, it's even easy to do. This paper show that an attacker can initiate cover channel of 4 bit per second and uh, Confirm coincidence with a target VM instance is less than 10 seconds. So it's cheap, it's fast, it can be done. So it is admitted. And people, like uh, in big organization, will mention that this is one of the main concerns 
you see, big organizations just prefer to build their own clouds. They do not want to be in the same cloud with uh, any person coming in the public. So, and uh, if you are talking about big organizations who have that reluctance, so the GOG, for instance, will be even more reluctant to, to go that far. So if we can have uh, some solution for that, uh, I believe uh, that's what we are trying to do here. So our approach to address this problem will basically use game theory. So what's the objective? To have like a cost-benefit analysis of uh, joining the public cloud or not. And uh, why do we apply game theory? Just by definition, the study of mathematical model of conflict and cooperation among intelligent, rational decision makers. So the key question will be, do we have any conflict? Yes, we have a conflict. The conflict is clear. The second question, are the player intelligent and rational? The answer also are supported by the data. So we see that cyber security attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated by the year going. So that level of sophistication shows intelligence and rationality from the player. So the assumption here is that you have the player that are rational and intelligent. So, and uh, we are talking here about the public cloud, the attacker, are intelligent and rational, that's our assumption. And uh, interdependency creates a conflict, so the conflict is there. So we can model it as a game, basically, and that's what we're gonna be doing. And uh, in the general framework, again, so how do you have an optimum decision in game theory? You have to find out three things. Who are the players? The different agents that interact in the scenario you have, those will be your player. What are the strategy? And what are the payoff? And the payoff, again, do not depend only on what each player is doing, but on the combination of action that everyone is doing. And the information structure, does each player know about other players' strategy and payoff? Then you can have a, a common knowledge scenario when everyone knows everything. And you can have also game with limited information, Bayesian game basically. And then we have our Nash equilibrium. This is guaranteed to exist by Nash Johem. And in case the game is repeated, you have to do what? To observe the action of the other player and update your belief as the game go. So that will be the case for repeated game. And whatever observation you have, you can update your action, update your belief and play the game over and over. So that's the general framework. And why the Nash equilibrium is so important? First of all, that's the solution of our game. So the more important part on the game theoretic model. And then what? At the Nash equilibrium, the assumption is that H1 is playing his best response to other players' strategy. And that can help you predict the attacker behavior. Because if you know the Nash equilibrium, that means what? You know each player optimum strategy. And knowing the optimum strategy of each player, that means what? You can play the best response to that optimum strategy. That will be the Nash equilibrium. So yes. What's the difference between a strategy and a strategy profile? Uh, the strategy is what a single player is doing. A strategy profile is a vector, a vector that shows what everyone is doing. Okay. If there's five players... I see, so it's the strategies of everyone. Yes, of everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Nash equilibrium, it's basically a strategy profile. That vector will the give you of a strategy yes what everyone is doing. Mm -hmm. So Nash equilibrium also helps to allocate the cyber security resources to protect against the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is basically an adversary who have some knowledge of your system and who is intelligent enough to launch the worst possible attack in your system. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
develop also cyber defense algorithm because if you are developing an algorithm for cyber defense you have to consider that your opponent is there and that your opponent is trying to defeat your algorithm so algorithm from game show he have to take into account that opponent capability to try to defeat the algorithm so cyber security algorithm based on game theory have that advantage that they are only counting that the adversary is there and that the adversary want to defeat the algorithm and form also the basis for formal decision making as we are trying to do here is that beneficial for me to go to the public cloud or not at all so the national equilibrium can also help do that so that will be our system model yes so this is a, it's a direct contribution from dr Minzao. yes to come up with uh, this system model to start the analysis so the analysis is based on this model so you have a set of uh, different user we have here an user and each have uh, a number of virtual machines that are run by an operating system and uh, on top of a virtual machine but the key part is here when they share the same hypervisor as uh, i explained before if let's say user n is very secure what can happen if user one is not an attacker find it better to compromise user one virtual machine get to the hypervisor before to launch an attack so user n knowing that can find out that do i really need to invest that much in security since i can be having other one not investing or is that even beneficial for me at all to go to that cloud or not so those are the potential question do i go to the cloud or not and if i go what level of investment can i make so there is also cyber attack that can directly go to the hypervisor without having to go through those virtual machines that's a possibility but that's not inside the scope of this research we are looking into interdependency between the different user in terms of security investment and you can also have some user that are already attacker we are also not looking into those aspects so our consideration is an attacker that can go to a user compromise his vm to launch a cross a side channel attack on other virtual machine so that's our model and uh, it is commonly accepted you see i have uh, jim pen we're also working in the cloud <laughs> so you will agree with me here i hope <laughs> So going there, from this system model, we have our game, and those are the parameters of our game. So having those parameters, if you invest a lot, you are more secure. And if you are more secure, what's the probability to get compromised? It will be QI. That is a lower probability compared to if you do not invest. If you do not invest, that will be QN. And We have also an important parameter that will be the probability of the hypervisor is compromised given a successful attack on a user. So given, that's a probability, a conditional probability. So that means a virtual machine get compromised. And given that it is compromised, what's the probability to have the hypervisor compromised? And uh, we have uh, the reward from using the cloud, the expense required for security for a specific user. We have the two users. So those are the notation. And for our game here, we have three player. And three player is an attacker and two user. And we consider one of the user to be the big user. That will be like the Air Force. And we consider another small user, that's a third player, that will be like a student, go in a public cloud. 
So having those small users and big users, how the game play out? So the attacker choose the matrix, one of the matrix. Here is attack I, that's when I attack the small user, and here is attack J, the big user. Those are the two attacker strategy, and user J choose the column. So it can invest or not invest. So invest is for this column, not invest for here. Same in this matrix. And user I, the small user, chose to choose the whole. So invest here or not invest. So those parameters are reflected in our game. We have here the reward from using the cloud. The expense. Why the expense? Because what? User I choose to invest. Anytime user I invest, we have an expense E. Not invest, we do not have the E. But investing, what's the benefit? To have QI. That means a lower probability of getting compromised. And not investing, what's the drawback? QN, that means a higher probability to get compromised. And the first line all of the time will give you the IP of second line, user J pay off, and third line, the attacker pay off. How do we find the attacker pay off? Combining the potential loss from the two users, the small and the big user. So this combination, this addition, is what you find in the third line. So the payoff of all the eight blocks can be explained similarly to this one. Yes? Quick question. Is this uh, game more dynamic in that you have packages changing at particular points in time? Uh, for example, I can try to get into a system without using a strategy mm -hmm. and then trying to fiddle and want to find a hole. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, this is static. This is static. But it can be taken care of in a dynamic game. It's not like a limitation to say that we have the game be repeated. It is a possibility. You see? As I mentioned in the beginning, you have many tools possible. It depends on the scenario you are looking into. So going there will be what I showed at the beginning when mentioning the tool, like repeated game approach. So for now, I'm just doing a static game, static game, not repeated, but it is possible. And you can repeat the scenario and having different game from period to period that go into a stochastic game, you can still do the analysis. The more parameter you take into account, you increase the complexity, but that is still doable. Yes? You can get what? Weekly. The weakness, yes. So how is this going to be the the So is there going to be a for somebody, you know, who not been able to sort of put the game in a proper action? Put the game. Uh, penalization, penalization come in because what? If you are not investing, you have a higher chance to get compromised in case of a direct attack from an attacker. That will be the penalty for not investing. But you have also that benefit that you save the required investment for security. You are not spending E. Mm -hmm. That is how they sort of focus on each one of those, uh, I mean, you know, the, the game they are adopting or the use case. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to the Nash equilibrium to the next slide. That's what we're going to discuss. And coming to this Nash equilibrium, we will see what will be the different player behavior getting the scenario. Yes? So is not considering the cost of penalty? Cost of penalty of what, again? Of joining the cloud? Yeah. No, no, no. The attacker from those paper that we mentioned, we show that it was uh, yes here. It is easy to establish coincidence with other virtual machine. That is possible. But now to know the payoff 
of uh, a specific user a specific user what do you need to know you need to know for instance here what are his potential reward from being in the cloud what are the required expense for security by what probability it can be compromised and uh, what are his potential loss so having those parameters make you know the payoff of the player so the payoff depends on those parameters and those payoff you know can be good like some reward and other can be bad like some potential cost so the assumption here is that a preliminary analysis is known to know the cost but even if the cost is not known you see it's not known you can have bayesian game framework to look into the case where those payoffs are not known so again you can understand that uh, in game theoretic approach you have the scenario and having the scenario you have the parameter that you consider in your scenario and that's what's fixed the scope of your research and you have the result based on those scenario but as intelligent researcher you make the scenario as close as possible to the reality so and you also try to make your best to have a useful model you will not have a perfect model but you may have something useful so yes yes professor an attacker is also a user So, since I'm looking into interdependency, mm -hmm. interdependency is the key word here. Yeah. How is your security depend on the security of others? So, I'm not considering one of the users to be an attacker. I'm not considering inter uh, internal attack. I'm not looking into that. That's not included in the assumption. No, they are not. They are not. Mm -hmm. But any model will look into that can be superimposed with this model, you know, and have a uh, yes. Right. Yes, that's the key. That's the interdependency. We focus on the interdependency, not internal attack or something else. So how is your security depend on my security when you are using the same hypervisor? A collusion also is not look here. This is a non-cooperative approach non-cooperative because also in game theory we have the cooperative part yes. cooperative game theory and we have the non-cooperative game theory so in the non-cooperative so the different players are assumed to be acting independently of each other everyone looking into his only best interest so we are using a non-cooperative framework here yes Yes. Yes, that is actually part of the future work. You bring up a good question. Having multiple attackers, do that change our model? I mentioned that, uh, you see, uh, repeated interaction, more than two users, that means multiple attackers. What will happen? You see, so that can be taken into account. But, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just taking a small and a big user, and uh, we can extrapolate many of the conclusions from here, from let's say two to n user. That is possible. It's not a showstopper, basically. That can be done, but not in the current paper. So we start simple. I like to start simple. <laughs> <laughs> So this, uh, after analysis, this will be our Nash equilibrium. And uh, the Nash equilibrium will depend here on the parameter of the game. 
So we have here a constant pi zero that depends on those four parameters. So if pi, that's the probability for the hypervisor to get compromised. If that's below some value, we have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium that is shown here. And uh, this pure strategy Nash equilibrium basically show that the small user do not invest. That's the end strategy. That means not invest. The big user invests, and the attacker go after the big user. That's AJ. So only the big user will be the target when this scenario, this condition hold. So that means if you choose to go in a public cloud, you will be the main target. Even if you have five, ten user, the attacker that is intelligent coming there will go only after you a hundred percent of the time. You do not like that. You see? But if this condition do not hold, that means we have three possible mixed strategies in our equilibrium. And those now depend on what? Depend on the expense required to invest in security. And we have three possibilities that we call M1 for mixed strategy one, M2, M3. For M1, it's a borderline condition when E exactly equals this E0, depends on those parameters. And we have a second possible mixed strategy for low value of E. That means when it's very cheap to invest in a security. And uh, for high value of E, that's when E is greater than this E0. That's mean for high value of security. This one is just to keep the individual rationality of the player. So if E go above some value, no one will prefer to invest at all. So if to secure your hypervisor, it will cost you a million dollars, no one will go. So just to keep that individual rationality. So basically, here is uh, for high cost for cyber security. So we see that if it is very cheap to invest in security, that will be this case. So the small player is investing. That's a mixed strategy where there's at least a probability alpha zero for the small player to invest in security. And the big user is fully investing 100% of the time. That's a pure strategy. And the attacker is playing here a mixed strategy. So the big player is not the only target that's here. Here, the attacker is playing a pure strategy attacking only the big player. But here, that's not the case. It's going after both users. And uh, in this case, that's for high value of security. The small user do not invest at all. The big user is uh, playing a mixed strategy, and the attacker also playing this mixed strategy. So we will see how that impacts the different payoff, you see, in the numerical result we have next. Can, can I just ask a quick question about that last slide? So I'm just trying to interpret the, the strategy notation you have here. So N means not invest. Yes. But if you have beta 0 times I plus 1 minus beta 0. Beta 0, let's say if beta. determine if I've invested or not invested? Yes, beta 0 is the probability by which you choose to invest. So now you are playing a mixed strategy. Mixed strategy basically means you randomize among the strategy that you have. And if you randomize, by what probability? What's the distribution by which you randomize? So the beta 0 gives that distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. The same for the lambda i, lambda j, you see, 1 minus lambda. That gives the distribution by which the attacker will go after each of the user. Mm -hmm. So here, we're going to have a few surprising results. We see for low value of pi, that means what the hypervisor is more secure. But the big player is having a lower payoff compared to a little higher value of pi when the hypervisor is less secure. Because what? In this first scenario, we have a pure strategy Nash. That means the attacker is only going after the big player. But when we switch to the mixed strategy Nash, what is happening? The attacker is randomizing. And being randomizing, that means the attacker is not the only target there. So not being the only target 100% of the time, increase the payoff of, uh, of, uh, of that big user. We are analyzing here the payoff of the big user. 
and here that's when e is less than e zero and for e less than e zero this is the mixed strategy that we are having for e bigger than e zero that's what we are having so for large expense we see what the big player is still even better off better off why because e being big what is happening here the small user is not investing at all and not investing at all what's the result that's the weak link for the big user more potential collateral damage and uh, no not investing at all no i repeat myself so for big value of e the big user is having a partial investment so saving some cyber security resources that's the case and saving those resources make that big user having a higher payoff compared to here. So just the analysis depending on e, the investment. So two main parameters important here. First is the price and the second is the probability of having the virtual machine compromise. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh -huh. and that's the goal of the research, have a mathematical approach, you know, many other people work in the area, but mostly do simulation, all of those things, that's not the main goal here, that's his decision making tool, optimum decision making tool. So, the second slide analyzes the result depending on if uh, having different value of e with pi less than pi zero that's the first scenario and pi greater than pi zero that's the second scenario and having those expenses basically give you a linear function because we are having a pure strategy Nash and in here we are having three possible mixed strategy so the m1 m2 m3 and uh, because pi is greater than pi zero here as we show for pi greater than pi zero, we have those three Nash equilibrium and we see the variation of the big player payoff depending on the equilibrium. So depending on the area you have, you have a different equilibrium and uh, that gives a different payoff. Yes. Uh, you do not assign value. If you're in a real system, that means you only you already know what are the pi, for instance, the probability for your hypervisor to get compromised, given that a virtual machine is compromised. You already know that in a real system, if you are taking a specific system, you already know what are the expense required for cyber security. So you know in which domain you are. And knowing in which domain you are, you can also know what is your payoff to be in the cloud or not. For instance, if you know that you are in this domain, since you are having a payoff less than zero, you see that here is not beneficial for me to be in the cloud. Here is beneficial, and here also is beneficial for me in the cloud. So it helps you given your system to make the decision. So having a real system basically means you have some specific set of parameters and from those specific set of parameters, having that in the game model, you find the equilibrium and you make the optimum decision. So, for example, what, what would be the cost if I don't invest in the Not investing, as I mentioned, will be that you have a higher probability of getting compromised. What, what, so, how do you quantify com 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 uh, The quantification, I'm not doing the quantification here. So I assume after experimental analysis or whatever, we have the number there. So having the number, that's what we put into the game, make the calculation, find the Nash equilibrium, and after that Nash equilibrium, get the, get, get the optimum decision, the appropriate way to go. <laughs> Do that answer your question? Yes, sir, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm.
some approach to quantify use like red team, a red team analysis in cyber security. Do a red team analysis, you can have uh, a like hundred attacker trying to compromise a system and find out what are the percentage of those attackers that successfully compromise the hypervisor and what are the percentage what do not successfully compromise. And from there, have some estimation of those probability after a red team analysis. You see, yes. Yes. I know you have talked about how you survive, try to fight through, mm -hmm. but if you keep saying probability, probability, yeah, I get it, but do you put the level of vulnerability on at the probability level? Yes. The more vulnerable you are, that's mean what? The more likely you can be compromised. That's the assumption here. So that is captured into that probability. So a more secure system will have a probability close to zero to be compromised. Yeah. A less secure will have a probability close to one to be compromised. The more secure you are, the highly sophisticated has to be the attack to be successful. True, but you don't know your level of your vulnerability because on, unless your system administrator mm -hmm. is aware of the vulnerability, Yes. That's the only way he can monitor. So if he has no clue, mm -hmm. the attacker, let's say the attacker is one of those guys coming from the genius bar, like yes. he usually calls them. So he, he knows, let's say, the operating system, your programming system, exactly what are all those failure or level of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But how am I going to put it in you know, probability sense of way? Uh, you bring out, uh, that's a subject, actually, the subject of uh, a new research area, the metric, the metric in cyber security. Having cyber security metric is challenging, you know, to have the exact number for those probability. It's a challenge, and a research area by itself, you see, how much secure you are. This something, for instance, that my chief scientists say, my chief scientists say, when they go for funding, you see, so they go at the Pentagon, and you have people from different domains who are requesting funding. Then somebody come and say, if you give me a million dollars, I can have a jet plane that will fly two hours more. You see? Then my chief scientist is asking for one million dollars to make a system more secure. Then the four-star general is going to ask, how much secure? And that's a question that my chief scientist cannot answer. How much secure for the one million dollar? So, <laughs> how much secure? So now, you're asking me, you know, to answer you exactly, you see, that given that you invest the amount E that I have here in cyber security, how much secure I become? You see, that's basically where your question comes down to. You see, the perfect answer there is, by itself, as I say, another research area. But the consideration here, sorry, the consideration here is that people have quantified that, and after quantification, you are trying to make a decision after that has been done. I think most of all of these things are pretty much heuristic games now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just sort of, uh, maybe you can come up with some heuristic which is not better than the existing heuristics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's probably the case. But there may be one other question I have, if I can ask. It may be sort of a little different. Now, I'm sort of looking, uh, you know, if there is an attack, yes, is it possible to mislead the attack? Uh, to mislead the attack? I mean, you know, like, Mm -hmm. Something if uh, an attacker is trying to sort of attack a particular system, mm -hmm. having some information which is 
not very precise, but is it possible to mislead the attack? Hmm. Mislead Good question. Attack. Good question. Actually, in my laboratory, there's a new program we're going to start called Cyber Deception. Correct, correct. Cyber Deception Program. So I asked the program manager, is that related to Oniport? You see, he said, no, not fully related to Oniport. It's something new, it's something different. And they are trying to look into game theory to cyber deception. So that's how they came to me, you see. But I do not exactly know the detail of the program, but uh, things need to be more specific, you see. To have like a model, a real model, we need like more specific scenario, yes, to, to get to, to that. Mm -hmm. And also it may be application dependent also. Yes, application dependent. Depends on the context that you are, on the scenario you are modeling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. <laughs> so this slide show the case where we are changing the potential loss for the big user. The potential loss for the small user here is set to 1. So any number here shows the magnitude. How much bigger is the big user compared to the small user? So how will the payoff change in that scenario? So as the payoff potential loss for the big user change, we have uh, all those possible mixed strategy. We have here the first mixed strategy, that's the M2, that's for low value of uh, E. Then we have the M1, then the M3, then the pure Nash. So you see that it will not be like a linear function. You see, your payoff will not be like a linear function of uh, what you can lose. It will be depending on what region you are in terms of pure strategy Nash mixed strategy Nash and which mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So we can see in this part that for this big user, it can be beneficial to be in the cloud, but as much as the small, the big user is at most like, uh, it term ought to be like three and a half times, close to three and a half times, just the cutoff point at zero. So the big user has to be like three and a half times the small user to still be beneficial for that big user to be in a public cloud. So after that, it is not beneficial. It can only be beneficial if you have a very high reward. That is what is happening here. So we increase the reward and we see what happens. Yes, so that's a pure translation here by reward increase. So the message is that if uh, you want to go in the cloud, it's important to know your neighbor. The neighborhood effect is important. It's already well known in real estate. So if you go to buy a house, you're going to look at the neighborhood. Do you have good house in the neighborhood? That will increase the price and the value of your house. Do you have bad house in the neighborhood? That will decrease the value of the house you build there. So in cloud computing, people seem not to be taking care or looking carefully at the neighborhood. So that's the problem of interdependency. The value of a house compared to the neighbor, they're interdependent. So sometimes to know the value of your neighbor, your own house, you look at how much your neighbor is selling your, his house. So in cloud, you have that effect because what having bad neighbor, that's mean neighbor that are not secure. They expose you to many type of vulnerability, you see? So I'm not claiming that it's the perfect solution, but at least one message is that if cloud designer find a way to separate big user from small user, having big user together in a more secure hypervisor in some type of environment and differentiate, it, differentiate them from small user, you see, that can be going to those clouds. So if there is this separation, you will have big user, that means that are more likely to invest in security and create then positive externality to other big users that are in that same hypervisor. And that will be an extra incentive for big organizations to go in a public cloud because they know that the public cloud that they are going 
also have secure virtual machine. So when Dr. Minzau and I were looking into that, we saw that there were not actually people, you know, that were looking into those type of analysis. So this is actually the first people to try to address the problem. So we believe it will be a good starting point, not a perfect solution. So, Yes. So if you sort of conceptually think of that as a cluster, mm -hmm. you know, each one of these uh, cloud, now is it possible that sometimes we can merge? Merge them. them. So there, there's, there's a lot of nice, interesting uh, mathematical theory can be built into this. Mm -hmm. So merge them, basically, you are neighbor if you are in the same hypervisor, and you are not neighbor if you are not in the same hypervisor regardless of if you have cluster or if you have any other mechanism so just find a way to make big user be in more or less different hypervisor compared to small user regardless of the exact arrangement and so on just my thinking for now maybe there's more into this <laughs> that uh, <laughs> Yes. 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 problem of securing a system after you see so there are theoretical research that show that those who secure the system after actually benefit more that's actually the biggest problem in cyber security that there's more incentive to launch version one let version one run and try to fix the bug the next year Instead of waiting for the next year, fix all the bug, you know, before to release a more secure version, you see. So I believe that's why you have many, many cyber security problems, because it's a lack of incentive, you see, to secure the system. And you have also the problem of asymmetric information. The software you are buying, it's difficult to know how secure is the software. So how to spend hundred? Why to spend hundred dollar more? Because they are telling you not, that the software is more secure. Why to spend that at all? How much secure? You do not know. So since the customer, regular customer, that is not a computer scientist, do not know the security level of the software. Why should software designer spend the time and resources fully testing the system before to release it? You see, and. In more complicated scenario, you have some form of matching. You see, that's mean two side market. Like today, you are having a competition between uh, Android uh, and Apple. You see, if you buy an iPhone or any phone, smartphone, you are buying the platform with the potential app you can have. The more secure is your platform, the more difficult it is 
to design an application for that platform. That means the more secure system will have what less application because more difficult to design an application on a more secure system. So what will happen? Many users will go for the platform that have more app because the more app there is, the more attractive it is. And how to have more app? Make it less secure. So who at the end will win the competition will be what? The less secure system will win the competition. And this analysis that show that after winning the competition, that's when you start to improve the security level. And you have many examples of that, of the history of different platform, depending on the year you are. So, <laughs> so that also show that cyber security is not only a technical problem, it's an incentive problem. They need to be a research that design at the low level the incentive for security, mathematical approach or game theoretic approach that look into the incentive problem in security. So systems are not secure in my view, not because there's less technology. No, the technology is there, but where is the incentive to apply the technology? That's the biggest question, I believe. The incentive to apply the technology. You have cryptographic algorithm, many things. You have them, but why having so much or so many cyber security attacks, so many vulnerabilities? That's the incentive problem. So that's why mechanism design, you know, into cyber security, I believe that will pick up, you know, as a, as a great research area also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and if yes, and even if you switch the liability, you are creating a new problem. If you say that for any software you put out, you are liable. You have the liability for any breach. That means what? All the company will go bankrupt. Are we better? Will all those companies bankrupt, or are we better having people who can at least try and put something in the market? You see. The liability is a big problem. So I was uh, the cyber security hard problem. We talk about liability and uh, came to the topic of cyber insurance. And you were there, right? You came to the cyber security hard problem. That's good. So then we have somebody from Wall Street, like a chief technical officer. And for that person, every day, one trillion dollar circulates in his uh, server. One trillion dollar per day. That means what? If you have a breach of let's say two, three weeks, it can be a loss of 21 trillion. To put that in perspective, you see, that's more than the US government budget, you see. Only one or two weeks of security breach. We're going to assure those, uh, assure those type of risks. So, liability, cyber liability is also an open research topic at this, at this level. <laughs>